Welcome to another episode. My name is Jose Naharo, and today we're going to take a look at the financial numbers of Fizz, National Beverage Corporation. In the last episode, we actually took a look at their 10Q report, their 10K report, and all the information they provided during their earnings. And to be honest, I was not a huge fan. So let's see if today's episode is going to be any different. Like always, I have my buddies Bull Solo and Darth Bear ready to keep track to see how the company is doing. So let's get started. All right, guys, so the first thing we're going to take a look at is the income statement. So in the income statement, first, I want to see the gross profit, which is the difference between the revenue and cost of revenue. So we can see revenue and cost of revenue all have this nice, healthy uptrend going on. Even though revenue last quarter, last time, same quarter, was a lot higher. For example, quarter this year was $263 million of revenue, opposed to quarter same time last year was 292 so about $30 million difference lower this quarter compared to the same quarter last year. But we can see overall the trend of the company is still a nice up, upward revenue. So that's definitely a good thing. Cost of revenue is also increasing. And it looks actually pretty similar to, to revenue itself. And that's to be expected, right? If they're selling more sodas, it probably equals the same amount of cost to make those soda cans and all those sodas and beverages. Gross profit, it definitely follows all three of both revenue and cost of revenue. As we can see, that nice, healthy uptrend. So even though gross profit is lower than it has been the past few quarters, I still see it to be in a nice, healthy uptrend. And for that reason, the first point is going to go to Bull Solo. But like I mentioned, right, it's definitely something to keep track to make sure that this downtrend does not, does not go any further. Because if there's more downtrend here, we can see that this uptrend is going to be cut off. But gross profit this quarter was $96 million compared to the same time last year was $115 million. So about a loss of about $20 million in gross profit. This is a smaller company compared to what I usually see. Uh, um, revenue in the $250 million is definitely one of the smaller companies I have taken a look at. The next thing I want to take a look at is um, net income, and net income is positive, and for that reason, I'm going to give a point to Bull Solo. Uh, net income is after everything has been, has been paid off, and that's pretty good that it is maintaining a nice positive net income. But again, we're also seeing a decrease in that net income compared to the same time last year. So same time last year, this was sitting at $48.8 million dollars. Where right now it's sitting at $34.5 million. So it definitely took a nice hit in net income. But at the moment, there is still a positive net income. So Bull Solo gets the point on that one as well. So right now, Bull Solo is definitely holding on into the income statement. But that could change in the upcoming quarters if this downtrend continues. The final thing I want to take a look at in the income, in the income statement is I want to take a look at these three incomes that I have listed. Operating income, earnings before income taxes, and net income. The only thing I care about here is that they're visually the same graph. Because if they're visually the same graph, to me that means that there's no funky business going on anywhere. And if I did see some weird, some weird visual effects in the graphs compared to the other inc earnings, the other incomes, then that would give me a red flag. But we can see here, operating income looks pretty much uh, uh, a copy of earnings before uh, income tax and it looks pretty much the same as net income as well so for that reason there's nothing that's throwing a red flag for me so another point for bull solo so bull solo has three points right now when we're taking a look at their fundamental numbers so the next thing we're going to take a look at is the balance sheet and here in the balance sheet I really just want to take a look at first at the shareholder equity. And shareholder equity is just the difference between total assets and total liabilities. And we can see assets do seem to be growing at a faster rate than liabilities. And for that reason, we see that shareholder equity also increasing. And we're going to give another point to Bull Solo. So Bull Solo is definitely looking good for this company, which is pretty impressive compared to what I didn't like, how they, how they presented their data. In, in the last episode so it's it's good to see how when i just look at straight out numbers 
the company doesn't look too bad. Next, we're going to take a look at asset distribution and liability distribution. Uh, let's start off with liability distribution for this quarter. And it things look pretty, pretty good, actually. Let's see. So here, the company only has $43 million of non-current debt. That's such a low amount of number. And it has $8.87 million of current debt, $25 million of tax and liabilities, and $65.71 million of payables. Um, we can see this is actually a pretty small liability sheet, and there's nothing that's pretty pretty scary. I like how this company has very low non-current debt, very low current debt, and um, that's pretty much it. So let's take a look at the asset distribution. First, I just want to take a look at receivables compared to payables. The receivables here is sitting at about, sorry, that was annual data. The receivables right now is sitting at about $84 million. So one thing I like is that receivables is higher than payables. Receivable is $84 million. Payable is $65 million. So for me, I like to take these off and um, definitely looking good. So let me just take receivables out and payables and see what's remaining. So what we have left is a $43 million of non-current debt. 25 million of tax liability and 8 million dollars of current debt. So that's what? That's about 75 million dollars of liability left. And this company actually has a pretty strong cash and cash equivalent sitting at 202 billion dollars. So this company in theory can use all its cash and cash equivalents to pay off its non-current debt, its current debt and its taxes. That's definitely a good thing. I'm definitely liking the breakdown of the liability distribution and the asset distribution. Just because a company has non-current debt, it doesn't mean that the company is doing bad. A comp anybody can have any form of debt as long as they use it efficiently or if they don't have that much debt. And this company has a very low amount of debt. And, and I'm definitely liking liability distribution. For that reason, I'm giving Bull Solo an other point here. So Bull Solo is definitely, is definitely killing the game in this one. Well, now let's keep continue looking at the asset distribution for this company. Uh, there's inventory sitting at about $63 million. Property plants is almost um, the, is the second highest thing at $164 million. But this is a company that produces soda. So they need to have warehouses. They need to have manufacturing equipment. They need to have plant. So it's definitely a company that you are expected to see. One, high inventory count because they need the raw materials. And two, a high property plant and equipment asset value. But what I'm liking is that cash and cash equivalent is sitting almost at the size of both those two things added together. So that's definitely, I'm definitely liking the asset distribution sheet. So for that reason, Bull Solo definitely gets another point. Next, we're going to take a look at their cash flow statement. So first, we'll start off with the net cash flow from operation. And in the net cash flow from operation, this is the amount of cash flow it has from its everyday use. And this is where you want it to be positive. I like it. I like a company to be positive, have a positive cash flow doing the stuff it's supposed to do. So it definitely has a positive cash flow sitting right now at $50 million. And again, you can see it's definitely at its nice uptrend, even though it's lower than the same time last quarter, it's still at a healthy uptrend. And for that reason, for us having a positive net cash flow from operations, Bull Solo gets another point. Here, there's uh, nothing else I really want to take a look at, but um, let's just, this company has not bought back any shares in such a long time, it seems. It actually has been selling shares. Maybe it might be in um, contracts to, to leaderships. It, and its payment on, on dividends is actually pretty random it seems to pay off dividends whenever it wants it's not a quarterly thing it's not a yearly thing it seems to do it just whenever it wants so these are just things that the investor should know so we were talking about net cash flow from operations and here right now we're taking a look at net cash flow from operations and comparing it to revenue again the only thing here is i don't really care about numerical value i just want net cash flow from operations to match similarly what revenue is doing and we can see this right we can see in this middle part revenue was pretty flat and net cash flow from operations was pretty flat but the moment revenue did have an uptrend 
we can see net cash flow from operation try to mimic that outcome so that's definitely a good thing that to me tells me there's no form of funny business happening anywhere right because if i saw revenue going up but at the same time i saw net cash flow from operations going down that to me would throw me a red flag the next one i want to take a look at is earnings per basic share compared to net cash flow from operations and again the same thing here i don't really care about numerical value i just want to make sure the graphs here look the same because if net cash flow from operations is positive then that to me earnings per basic share should also be positive or vice versa if earnings per basic share is at an uptrend net cash flow from operations should be at an uptrend and we can see here that's pretty much the case here so that's definitely another point for bull solo it tells me that the company is not doing anything fishy at the moment um, or from somewhere where i can see so easily uh, one would have to dig in deeper if they really want to make that true assessment the final thing we want to take a look at is metrics and we'll start off with current ratio so current ratio is current assets divided by current liabilities and this ratio you want it to be above one because that means that this company has higher assets than liability. Right now, it seems to be sitting at a 3.1 current ratio, and that's actually a great thing. That means this company has three times more current assets than it has current liabilities, and that's definitely a thing I think you want to see. So for that reason, another point for Bull Solo. So uh, this company is actually pretty much killing killing it with with point uh, with Bull Solo at the moment, and that's pretty pretty impressive as I said in the last episode, I was not happy at the way they presented the data. Um, so it's definitely pretty, pretty good to, to see that this company is doing pretty good. Next, we're going to take a look at debt to equity ratio. And debt to equity ratio is total debt divided by total equity. Obviously, you want equity to be higher than total debt. So here, you want a value below one. And that seems to be the case. Right now, we're sitting at a 0.5 ratio. So that's another great news. So another point to Bull Solo. Next, we're going to take a look at gross margins and profit margins. One thing I definitely get to see here is we definitely have a nice gross margin sitting at 36.6%, but it is lower than its highs a few quarters ago. And profit margins, we see the same thing. Profit margin is sitting at 13.1% compared to its highs of 18.1%. A few quarters ago so here i'm kind of torn i'm gonna give a point to them because they're still in the positive but i'm also gonna give a point to darth bear because darth bear couldn't leave here empty-handed but seeing gross margin and profit margin going down is definitely not a great thing so darth bear gets a point as well so now in the last episode we ended with what i would value this company at to be honest um this company let me let me first name the good things about this company this company has a very nice income uh, balance sheet it has a very distributed asset asset distribution and it has a pretty low uh, liability distribution so that's definitely great news this company can survive a long term we can see with this current ratios and it's that to equity ratios which are pretty much based on the balance sheets we got Good numbers on both those things so that to me tells me the balance sheet is pretty strong this company also has a positive gross margin and a positive profit margin but unfortunately we're seeing revenue decline a little bit compared to same time last year and we see gross margin and profit margin decrease we took a look at what the uh, future analysis expect this company to make and we can see that this company is not growing at a fast pace it's actually it's growing very minimal and that's something that that um that I'm, I'm not too too happy about let's what else did we see here let's just take a quick look this company does have a positive net cash flow from operations but the way it presents its data by making it seem like it has strong shareholder return i definitely don't think it does especially with this fake buyback program and the reason i call this a fake buyback program because this buyback program has not bought a stock in the past three years and that that to me makes it like they're just saying that they have a buyback program but they're not using it at the moment so why would i want to buy a company a stock that a company itself is not buying back uh, but in the last episode we saw that this company had a pe ratio of about a forward pe ratio of roughly 17 17.5 percent 
based on, let's see if I can pull it up real quick, PowerPoint for Fish. So I think it was based on 2021, yeah, two years from now, and it was an earnings per share estimate of $2.52. So I, per I personally, for me, right, this depends on the type of investors, I think a 17.2 PE ratio is definitely too high for a slow growing company with very random shareholder return. Um, the only thing I truly like about this company is that it has a positive, a very great balance sheet. To me, I would feel okay buying a decent amount of shares at about a 15 PE ratio based on this. So let's take a look at what that would mean. So it was $2.52. So two dollars and fifty-two times fifteen would be about thirty-seven dollars. So that's where I would feel comfortable buying some shares. It definitely anything below fifteen PE ratio or anything below thirty-seven point eight is some place where I would definitely buy a little more than just some, um, just because I feel that that would definitely be a cheap price to buy this company. And let's take a look at how this company has been doing in chart wise. Right now, it's sitting at forty-three dollars. But it actually got as low as, let's see, how low did it get? It got pretty low. Let's, um, this one doesn't actually really tell me much. Let's just take a look at Google. Uh, let's take a look at the past year. This company dropped down to about $40 at some point. I'm pretty sure it went to the low, high 39s. Um, yeah, 39.89. So to me, at the moment, I believe this company is still... A little overvalued in my opinion right other investors can see can see a 17 PE ratio and think it's cheap especially I do feel like a lot of investors are thinking this company is great for a purchase or acquisition and that obviously would give this a more value more value than that but for me I definitely would wait for below $38 and that's where I would purchase this company so that's it for it guys I hope you guys enjoyed the episode let me know what you guys think I definitely enjoyed, I mean, we can see Bull Solo took the point, took all almost all the points here, but at the end of the day, it's still not a buy for me based on everything we saw in the last episode and this episode. So let me know, guys, what you guys think on this. Make sure to post on the comments, share, share, give me a like, and subscribe. Take care, guys. Have a good night, and see you next time.